This video will be focusing on the disaster known as Sky Battles and the devastation it has had on several Pokemon Idol animations that can still be seen even to this day. Sky Battles were just another classic Game Freak one-off gimmick that appeared in Pokemon X and Y and was never seen in any game after that. The whole premise behind Sky Battles is that you fight random NPCs in a skybox. That's it. It's one of the more uninteresting gimmicks Game Freak has introduced, but it effectively butchered many idle animations in its wake. Sky Battles featured only a small pool of eligible Pokemon that consisted of Flying-type Pokemon or Pokemon with the Levitate ability. To produce the illusion that the Pokemon were in the air, Game Freak had to make all eligible Pokemon appear to be airborne. This wasn't an issue for the Pokemon with the Levitate ability because, well, they levitate. The issue stems from the winged Pokemon. The logical solution to this obstacle would be to give all eligible winged Pokemon an additional, separate, flying animation, while retaining their grounded state animation for regular battles. But as we all know, Game Freak is quite illogical when it comes to basic things like this, so instead, Game Freak chose to have all eligible winged Pokemon remain airborne indefinitely, even though sky battles were completely removed after X and Y. Now at first you would think, well that's not so bad. Pokemon with wings use their wings now. That's not a problem, right? Right? Yeah, you would think so, but this is Game Freak we're talking about here. They're the masters of half measures and cut corners. So today we're going to take a look at the damage caused by Sky Battles. Skarmory. Here is Skarmory's idle animation found in Pokemon Battle Revolution. Skarmory is a really cool Pokemon. It's a metal bird. The concept isn't groundbreaking or anything, but Skarmory's overall design is executed very well, and the simple yet crucial animations found here really complement Skarmory as a territorial, savage, hardy bird Pokemon. It's crazy how a bird Pokemon becomes a more convincing and believable bird when given proper bird-like animations. It's funny how that works. Now I know you guys already had a small taste, but let's bring back up Game Freak's animation real quick. The first thing that you'll notice is that Skarmory doesn't use its wings at all. The wings are completely static. Which begs the question how Skarmory is even flying because for a bird to fly they need to flap their wings. Game Freak's idle animation of Skarmory has it breaking a basic law of physics. This shatters the illusion of life, significantly lowers the appeal of Skarmory, and makes Skarmory extremely unconvincing as a character. Skarmory looks less like a Pokemon and looks more like a lifeless puppet dangling from string. Allow me to show you what an actual flying Skarmory looks like. That clip was taken from Pokemon Coliseum, a GameCube game that came out in 2003, over 16 years ago. Not only did Coliseum have its own region and its own story, much like the other Game Freak games, it also has way better animations than the ones found in Sword and Shield. Which is really, really sad and pathetic when you think about it. The saddest part is that all the Pokemon featured in this video have a grounded state idle animation. This is what Skarmory looks like in Pokemon Ami. This animation is a lot worse than the one found in PBR because it's still completely static and lifeless. But it's way better than the idle animation that Game Freak went with. Skarmory is at least obeying the law of gravity, even though he's still devoid of life and personality. Here is an example of Game Freak properly animating Skarmory flapping its wings. Game Freak is clearly capable of animating their Pokemon, so I have no idea why they decided to go with the string Skarmory instead. Tropius. Here is Tropius idle animation in PBR. The way Tropius extends its neck and then retracts it has it come across as very hefty. There's also some nice secondary action of the bananas around Tropius' neck producing the illusion of inertia. This simple action makes Tropius feel grounded and alive. His appeal is convincing enough to see Tropius as a real Pokemon. Let's see how Game Freak handled Tropius. Oh man, that was brutal. Once again, Game Freak has a winged Pokemon not flapping its wings to generate lift. Instead, they just have the Pokemon float indefinitely, which looks awful. I'll give Game Freak some credit here. There's some slight animation on Tropius' leaves which make it look like it's blowing in the wind. That's a nice touch. But that doesn't mean much when it's attached to a static, lifeless puppet of a character on strings. Here is an example of a proper animation of Tropius flying found 16 years ago. Here is Tropius in Pokemon Ami, 
It's rather dull with almost no animation, but it's significantly better than the idle animation that Game Freak decided to go with. And here is an example of Game Freak properly animating their Pokemon. This is also way better than the T-Pose Tropius. I have no idea why Game Freak thought that T-Pose Tropius was a good idea. Zatu! Here is Zatu's idle animation in Pokemon Battle Revolution. Zatu is known as a Pokemon that literally doesn't move at all. Yet Genius Sonority went out of their way to give Zatu some movement so that it appears alive. They also have some nice follow through animation with the red appendage on the back of Zatu's head swaying, producing the illusion of inertia. What Game Freak did to Zatu is especially painful. They transformed the quiet, stoic, and calm demeanor of Zatu into a goofy looking, lifeless husk of its former self. Here is an example of properly animated Zatu flight. My Zatu Pokemon Ami idle animation was bugged out in my model viewer software, so I had to bust open the emulator. This animation, although minimalistic, would actually work for Zatu. The slight swaying back and forth really fits in with Zatu's personality. Swallow! Here is Swellow in Pokemon Battle Revolution. The animations aren't crazy or anything, but the simple bird-like movements have Swellow come across as a more convincing bird-like Pokemon. Let's bring up Game Freak's idol. Swellow is also a victim of not flapping its wings and instead just levitating indefinitely. I appreciate the detail of the wings blowing in the wind, but I would appreciate it even more if the wings were actually flapping. That would be infinitely more convincing that Swellow is actually flying, as opposed to disobeying gravitation. Here is an example of Swellow properly animated 16 years ago in Pokemon Coliseum. Here is Swellow found in Pokemon Ami. And here is Game Freak properly imitating bird flight. Salamence! Salamence always looked very intimidating in Pokemon Battle Revolution. All jokes aside, Salamence always looked really cool. Let's see how Game Freak treated Salamence. Salamence, like the rest of the Pokemon, defies gravity with its static, motionless wings. Here is how Genius Sonority interpreted what a flying Salamence would actually look like. Here is Salamence in Pokemon Ami. It's very similar to the one found in Pokemon Battle Revolution. This idle animation is so much better than Salamence's actual idle animation that it hurts. There's also some really sad irony here. Try and follow the logic with me on this one. So Game Freak puts Salamence on the ground and has it flapping its wings. But when they want to portray Salamence flying in the air, they make sure that its wings aren't moving. Classic Game Freak logic. Electros! The Electros, due to having the Levitate ability, is actually eligible for Sky Battles. Electros wasn't in Pokemon Better Revolution because Revolution only goes up to Generation 4. But then I remembered that I have Pokedex 3D Pro. It's a neat little game that has high quality models and animations of all of the Pokemon up to Generation 5. The Pokemon introduction clips I've been showing you are from Pokedex 3D Pro. Electros was always one of my favorite Pokemon and I really love this idle animation. Game Freak took a different approach with regards to Electros though. This is a really weird one because unlike every other Game Freak animation that was featured featured in this video, this one is actually properly animated. It shows Electros using its levitate ability to levitate, but instead of having Electros just stand there, Game Freak actually animated it swimming. A lot of people preferred Electros's animation found in Pokemon Black and White for the DS, so Pokedex 3D Pro's idle animation would be the preferable animation in this case. Game Freak's idle animation of Electros isn't bad by any means, but it completely alters your perception of the Pokemon. It's also worth noting that Electros is grounded in the anime. The Electros is also grounded in his official artwork. I personally feel that the Game Freak animation was perfect for Sky Battles, but the grounded animation would be more appropriate for regular battles. I'm really curious to see what you guys think, so make sure to leave a comment with which Electros idol animation you prefer.
That about wraps up my thoughts on the Sky Battle tragedy. Game Freak is fully capable of animating their Pokemon, and in a lot of cases, they already did animate their Pokemon. It's almost like Game Freak is tone deaf when it comes to the personality of their own Pokemon. They fail to capture the true essence of the Pokemon and communicate that essence through its movements. However, they definitely do a great job of stripping personality from the Pokemon. Which is unfortunate because the Pokemon are a lot more interesting and fun when they're able to express themselves. Always remember, don't settle for less, fight for more. Thanks for watching you guys.